layers. Um, instead of giving you notes on this, I wanted to make a video because this diagram here on the reference table on page 10 um, really goes over all of it. So I'm gonna spend about five minutes just pointing out the key features of this diagram. I'll play this as part of our classwork for the day or as our video for the day. Um, and you can refer back to this because hopefully you'll recall a lot of you know what you did when you learned this with your teacher. But first thing that I wanted to show is this is, imag imagine that this diagram is as if Earth was a spherical cake that you cut out a sliver of, right? That's really what this diagram is. So you cut into the, the Earth and then when you pull out that piece, you're looking at what we call a cross section of it, right? So imagine like Earth was a layer cake and you're seeing the different layers here, right? And deep in the center of Earth, we have our inner core, followed by the outer core, stiffer mantle, right? The asthenosphere, which is our plastic mantle. That word plastic means that it flows. It's, it's, it's a very hard thing to describe without having a really a deep understanding of geology, but basically it's not a liquid, it's not a solid, it's just something that flows. So next to a sphere, I'm gonna just kind of draw a little arrow and I'm gonna just write flows, just to kind of point that out to you because that is an important thing to keep in mind. Um, then above the asthenosphere, we have some interesting things here. I'm gonna highlight just so that you can see what I'm talking about. Let me just change my color here. I have the lithosphere, right? Now the lithosphere, if you see, is made up of two different things. It's made up of the crust, right? Which is the outer layer of uh, solid rock surrounding the earth. But then it's also made of the rigid mantle. So the first layer of the mantle is actually part of what we call the lithosphere. Um, but that white stripe right here, okay, I'm gonna zoom in again. You can see it here, I'll change the color of my highlighting. But this white stripe right there, that's the first layer of the, man of the mantle and it's solid, it's rigid. Okay, so they'll call that the rigid mantle or the upper rigid mantle, depending on what you're reading. Below that, we have the asthenosphere, which is the plastic mantle. Then we can get into the stiffer mantle and, and we keep going down and down and down. Um, a couple of other things about this diagram that are worth pointing out. Uh, you'll notice here that the crust, there's two different types of crust, right? We have continental crust, which is made of granite. That's why they say it's granitic and it has a lower density, right? And we also have basaltic oceanic crust, which means it's made of basalt and it has a higher density. That will become more important in tomorrow's lesson, but um, I wanted to just point that out to you. So those are the two types of crust, right? The densities of each other layer are shown down here. And if you could see here, they actually even show geographically some things, right? They're pointing out the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. This would be where the Atlantic Ocean is. Here's kind of North America. And then the Pacific Ocean by the Cascades, which is off the coast of um, Washington State, is over there. So let's take a look now at the bottom part of this diagram. We kind of looked at everything up top there. Um, we also need to be able to look at the temperature and pressure with depth. So now, these are two different graphs, right? I have pressure over here in millions of atmosphere, and then I have temperature in Celsius, and I have depth at the bottom in kilometers. Um, my interior temperature is this solid line, right? And if you notice, the deeper we go, right, at zero depth, the temperature is basically zero. And as we can go all the way up to six, beyond 6,000 kilometers, it gets to above 6,000 degrees centigrade. Um, same thing with pressure. We start at zero millions of atmospheres and we get all the way up to about 3.5 million atmospheres um, deep down around 6,300 kilometers. Um, so let's just say I said, what was the, the pressure in the middle of the outer core? Well, the middle of the outer core is right here, right? So I go down until I hit my pressure line, I go across, it's about 2.5 million atmospheres. What if I said, what is the depth in the middle of the outer core? Go to the middle of the outer core again, I go down to my depth line, it's about 4,000 kilometers, okay? Um, so it's really just reading a graph. Sometimes they'll ask you a combo question, they'll say, you know, when the pressure is 2.5 million atmospheres, what is the temperature? Well. 2.5 million atmospheres is right here. I go down to my temperature, I go across, it's about 5,700 degrees Celsius. So there's different things that they could ask you. Um, the last thing that I really wanted to point out here was that the different layers of the Earth's, I'm sorry, sorry, the Earth's inside of the Earth, not the atmosphere, um, are different phases, right? Some of them are solid, some of them are liquid. We said the asthenosphere flows, right? I already wrote that down because that's kind of the best way of describing that one. Um, but the other layers we can kind of figure out by looking at the melting point versus the interior temperature. Now, if something's temperature is below its melting point, that means that it is a solid, right? It has not melted yet, right? If something's temperature is above its melting point, that means it has melted, right? So 
that means that it is a liquid. So wherever we see an interior temperature that is below right, the melting point, that tells us that, tells us that this layer is a solid. Right? Wherever we see the interior temperature above the melting point, that tells us this layer is a liquid. So what that means is that our stiffer mantle is a solid, our outer core is a liquid, and our inner core is a solid. Okay, um, so that's the basics of this diagram. I just wanted you to get a, the gist of it here. Um, the classwork that you do, you'll do today will definitely go into more detail on this, but I think that just understanding this diagram, breaking it down like this will help you. So hopefully this was useful.